primary ciliary dyskinesia was once considered a milder form of cystic fibrosis as the two present the same. However, the underlying pathophysiologies differ. Now, in cystic fibrosis, we have a defective CFTR gene. The CFTR gene is responsible for the movement of chloride ions out of the cell. It is also responsible for the inhibition of the epithelial sodium channel. So this here is the ENAC channel. So if this is inhibited, sodium stays outside the cell in the lumen. Now remember, wherever sodium is, water shall follow. Because chloride and sodium are both in the lumen, water shall follow. So the water is now in the lumen. This here ensures that the lumen, the lung lumen, is lubricated and hydrated. But if this fails, the lumen becomes dehydrated and the mucus thickens, bacteria builds up, and patients develop complications. So if this fails, no chloride shall go outside, this shall also fail, meaning sodium is continuously being pumped into the cell, and as a result, this here is reversed. The water's coming into the cell, not out of the cell. So here in grey, we have dehydration of the lumen. Now a sweat test is the gold standard investigation for a cystic fibrosis diagnosis. Now in primary ciliary dyskinesia, the pathophysiology involves the cilia. So there is disruption or failure of the cilia. Now normally the cilia move in a synchronized rhythmic motion. So they all move in one motion in one direction, allowing for clearance of mucus, bacteria and foreign particles. This is coordinated by specific proteins within the cilia. So this is a cilia and these are the specific proteins inside of it. Now in PCD, there is disruption or an abnormality of these proteins. This results in either loss of the synchronized motion or complete failure of the cilia. There is no specific investigation for PCD, but measuring nasal nitric oxide production is very sensitive for a PCD diagnosis.